Yes, peeps. So thank you for the lights. Updated. Hey, check this out. These are all those uh that's confidential. Haha. <laughs> when an ear oil type landing gear shock strut is used. The initial shock of the landing is cushioned by the fluid being forced through the metered opening. Let's see what it says. Most shock struts. Most shock struts employ a metering pin for controlling the rate of fluid flow from the lower chamber of the shock of the strut into the upper chamber. During the compression strut, the rate of fluid flow is not constant, but is controlled by the variable shape of the metering pin as it passes through the upper orifice. What it says, during compression stroke, the rate of fluid flow is not constant, but it's controlled by variable shape of metering pin as it's passed through the orifice. Next. A sleeve spacer or bumpering is incorporated in the landing gear shock strut to a sleeve spacer or bumpering. Limit the extension, limit extension stroke of torque arm, limit the extension of the torque arm, reduce rebound effect. Now this right here, let's check this, what we got. I wasn't sure. This is a tricky statement right here. The extension stroke of the oleo shock strut occur at the end of compression stroke. As as the energy stored in the compressed air causes the aircraft to start moving upward in relation to ground and wheels. A stopping device is used to prevent the strut from rebounding too rapidly, and a sleeve spacer or bumpering is incorporated to limit the extension stroke of the strut. So, a sleeve spacer or bumpering is incorporated in a landing gear oleo shock strut to limit the extension stroke. Now, around here, I see a part that says limit extension stroke to how are we moving so far are you seeing everything good job so we got that one right let's get it the purpose of the sequence valve in a hydraulic retractable landing gear system is to sequence valve the purpose of sequence. Who wanna look up what the word sequence means? We know what it means. Here's what it means. Prevent the landing gear from falling too rapidly upon extension. Nah, -uh. I doubt it. Ensure operation of the landing gear doors are in proper order. Now this sounds perfect. Provide a means of disconnecting the normal source of a I'm gonna go with this one. C. Let's see what it says. The answer is right here, baby. In a relax in a retractable landing gear system, sequence valves are used to ensure that the landing gear doors open and close at the proper time. To ensure that the operation of landing gear enters in the proper order. And yo, that teacher was a good teacher, man. But I like stuff the harder way, man. I do not like doing stuff easy, man. Real talk. That's just me. I will go about things the hardest way possible. And then I come home to sleep all day. That's. I'm just a dummy. <laughs> Why go about stuff the hard way, guys? Don't follow my dumb ass. Do it the easy way. I don't know what that is, though. I can't tell you. 
Now, let's cover this side so you don't want to know the answers. Let our brain think. When servicing an ear oil shock strut with 5606, the strut should be collapsed and the fluid added to the filler opening, partially extended, and the fluid added to the filler opening, fully extended, and the fluid added to the filler opening. It should be collapsed, people. But let's just put a sticky there. Come back to it at the end. Instructions concerning the type of fluid and amount of air pressure to be put in a shock strut are found where? Instructions concerning the type of fluid and the amount of air pressure to be put in a shock strut are found where? In the aircraft manufacturer service manual? Huh? I don't know. Instructions concerning the type of fluid. Okay, the aircraft manufacturer service manual, the aircraft operation limitations on the airplane data plate. I'm going to say E. If the extended longitudinal axis of the main landing gear wheel assembly intersects at the aircraft, the wheels can be termed as. Oh, so what you're saying is if the extended longitudinal axis of the main landing gear wheels assembly intersects at the aircraft, the wheel can be towed out. That means it's a big ass plane and the wheels are far from each other. If the aircraft shock strut ear oil type bottoms upon initial landing contact but functions correctly during taxi, the most probable cause is a restricted metering pin orifice, low ear charge. I'm gonna go with low fluid. Let's start from the bottom to the top. You see? Start from the bottom, baby. The ear oil shock strut absorbs the landing impact by letting oil transfer from the oil chamber into the ear chamber around the tapered metering pin. Taxi shots are taken up by the compressed ear in the upper chamber. Bottoming out on landing is caused by a low fluid level. Most of the time it's a low fluid level. Tow in a tow out is the amount of wheel, is the amount the wheel deviates from the street, from a street ahead condition. In front of the wheels, try to move together. They are towed in. What? If the front of the wheels are, wheels try to move together, they are towed in. If the front of the wheels try to move apart, they are towed out. Okay. Oh, the towed out condition will cause the longitudinal axis of the wheels if extended to meet somewhere behind the aircraft. Wow. So when it's aft, it's towed out on the longitudinal axis. Now, instructions concerning the type of fluid and amount of air pressure to be put in a shock shot are found. Proper method of serving shock struts with fluid and nitrogen will be found in the aircraft manufacturer service manual. So e. When servicing an air oil shock strut, it should be fully collapsed and the fluid added to the specification of the manufacturer. Collapse and the fluid added at the filler openings. Centering, okay. What is the function of CAM incorporated in the North Wheel Shock Struts? Provide steering of the aircraft during ground operation, straighten the nose wheel, provide an internal shimmy damper. I'm gonna say CAM straighten the nose wheel. That's a ticket, because I don't know it yet. 
extension of the ovular short strut is measured to determine a physical condition of the strut B. Wait, what? Amount of, I think the book have a little error here. Amount of oil in the short strut. Extension of an ovular short strut is measured to determine proper operating position of the strut. So I think it's C. What should be checked when a shaft strut bottoms during long landing? Air pressure, packing seal, air pressure. I must have closed that one. The hydraulic packing seal used in a landing gear shaft strut are the hydraulic packing seals used in a landing gear shock strut are used only with a specific type of fluid. The hydraulic packing seals used in a high in a landing gear shock struts generally designed to be compatible with more than one type of fluid. Wrong. Used only with a specific it sounds right. Cap oxide contact with the fluid by Teflon. I'm gonna say B. And it is B. Due to difference in composition. Vegetable based petroleum based and phosphate ester based fluid will not mix. Neither the type of seal and any other fluid. Neither will we determine of any of the other fluids. So this is B. The most likely cause of shock shock bottoming for landing gear is fluid level. Extension of the old yo shock strut is measured to determine on some shock struts the correct amount of inflation is desire is determined by measuring the amount of extension in inches between two given points of the strut. C centering device includes such units that are internal centering cam. The center the nose wheel as it retracts into the wheel well and that's B. Those are all correct. Next, are you with me? If I'm going too fast, let me know. Just let me know. Raise your hands if I'm going too fast. When an empty shock strut is filled with fluid, Care should be taken to extend compress the strut completely at least two times to force out the excessive fluid. Totally lubricate piston nut. Ensure proper packing when seating and removal of air bubbles. Okay, this is the last one folks. I know you guys are tired. In shock strut chevron seal. In shock strut, chevron seal are used to. In shock strut, chevron seals are used to serve as bearing surface, prevent oil from escaping, absorbing bottoming effect. I must say, prevent oil from escaping. On most aircraft, the oil level of an of an ear and oil shock strut is checked by. Removing the oil filler plug and reinserting a gauge. Releasing the ear and seeing that the oil is to the level of the filler plug. This sounds good. Measuring the length of the shock strut with certain ear pressure in the strut. On most aircraft, the oil level of a, the oil level of an ear and oil shock strut is checked by releasing the ear and seeing if the oil is up is to the level of the filler plug removing the oil and inserting the gauge oh. the landing gear position and warning system will provide warning in the cockpit when the throttle is at 4 a landing gear position warning system will provide a warning in the camp in the cockpit when the throttle is retarded and the gear is not down and locked. Retarded and gear is down and locked. 
on fait ici NDA oh, right. so let's go gear warning device is incorporated on the retractable landing gear aircraft and usually consists of a horn or some other aura device and a red warning light The horn blows and the light comes on when one or more pilots are retarded and the landing gear is in any position other than down and locked. Where I need it, you don't understand. When servicing a shock strut, the air pressure should be released and the strut fully compressed. The strut should be the shot should then be filled to the level of the ear valve opening with the with an approved type hydraulic fluid and this was a correct release the air and see that the oil is to the level of the plug in shock struts seven zero are used to prevent oil from escaping okay when an empty shock shot is filled with fluid Care should be taken to extend and compress the strut completely at least two times to ensure proper packing seat, ring seating and removal of air bubbles. So after an empty shock shot is serviced, it must be bled to get the air out of the fluid cavity. This is done by extending and compressing the strut until there is no sign of air bubbles coming from the strut bleed nodes. This same operation also ensures the proper seating of the seals in the strut. Now, seven seals in a shock strut are used to seal all in the strut. They are located between the inner and outer cylinder. At the lower end of the shock strut, they are held in place between packing spaces, which compress the chevron seals and force them to form tight seals. Now let's go over some general. Let's go over some OMC questions. Mostly O oral questions. Just only do like this. So I know students can be overbearing, and we don't want to make it boring. Never, ever make a study boring. What is the purpose of torque links? On the old shock strap, we just went over this. To keep the wheel in alignment and prevent the piston from coming out of the cylinder. To keep the wheel in alignment and prevent the pistons from coming out the cylinder. A landing gear shock shot should be inflated with what gases? A landing gear shock shot should be inflated with what gases? Nitrogen and dry air. Nitrogen and dry air. What condition should a mechanic look for during a regular inspection of the exposed piston section of the landing gear? What condition should a mechanic look for during a regular inspection of the exposed section of the landing gear? Cleanness. Evidence of damage, proper extension, cleanness, evidence of damage, and proper extension. What prevents air from leaking out between the two halves of a split wheel assembly? What prevents air from leaking between the two halves of a split wheel assembly? An O ring. What prevents air from leaking out 
between the two halves of the free period I said in the O ring. What condition should a mechanic look for during a regular inspection of an exposed piston section of the landing gear? Cleanness, evidence of damage, proper extension. Why are fusible plugs installed on some aircraft wheels? Why are fusible plugs installed on some aircraft wheels? To release the pressure generated by heat buildup before the tire blows. Fusible plugs release the pressure generated by heat buildup before the tire blows. That's all for today, folks. Come back. We're going to have a new video. And we're going to let you know how to get this license. One day at a time. Slowly. But surely.